Happy Pentecost. Welcome to St. Paul's. Today is May 23rd, 2021. We are so grateful that you're here to join us to celebrate this gift of church that we have for one another. First off, we want to do say goodbye to our Reverend Thomas Skillings as he departs from us. We wish you well. We wish you prayers of peace and joy in your next steps following God and love in your life. And we do want to say thank you to our four youth. We want to celebrate you and your confirmation today. So yay for confirmation, yay for your lives of faith. And we hope to continue to be walking alongside you as you grow deeper and deeper in this relationship with God. So thanks for being here and let us pray together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very, very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to those bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath into you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, 
and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, so that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, those bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. Thus says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now that I'm going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of the world, the ruler of this world, has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For she will not speak on her own, but will speak whatever she hears. And the spirit will guide and declare to you the things that are to come. The spirit will glorify me because the spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, Help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Today we gather on the day of Pentecost, usually, as, usually a day built around the story of that first Christian community that gathered 50 days after the day of the resurrection. And it's a story about a great, mighty, rushing wind coming upon the disciples and other people witnessing this miraculous, mysterious, powerful moment of Holy Spirit. And of course, we give thanks for that moment and celebrate that moment. But it's such a rare moment when something like that happens. So today I would like to, yes, celebrate and rest in Holy Spirit, but look at the other two stories that were given today about ways Holy Spirit works in the world and in our lives. The first story is the story from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a prophet when the capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem, was, was destroyed. And not just the buildings are destroyed, but they felt like their spiritual life had been destroyed. And so you can understand why God gives Ezekiel this vision of the dry bones. Ezekiel gets a vision of bones scattered across a valley floor, bones of people, bones scattered about and disconnected all over this probably field of battle. And that's not just a literal vision, it's a vision of their spiritual lives as well. Their whole lives, their souls are scattered and dried up across the valley floor. And into this vision, God's voice comes and tells Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones Ezekiel says, can these bones even live? Prophesy to these bones. And he gives 
Ezekiel commandments to command the bones to come together. And punctuated throughout this reading are three words. You shall live. And it's not this kind of you shall live that you might say to your child after they fall and skin their knee and you say, oh, you'll live. I don't even think it's the kind of you shall live that a doctor might tell a patient who is struggling with some difficult disease where, where they say, you will live. I think it goes even deeper than that. And God is saying through Ezekiel time and time again, you will live, you will find life, you will thrive once again to the people of Israel. You will live. And for us, that's one of the ways that the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit comes at those times in our lives when our own personal life or the lives of those around us are like scattered dry bones across the valley floor. And we feel like we're totally disassembled, totally at odds. We don't, we don't know if we're going to make it. Are we going to get through this? And this promise from Ezekiel, this Holy Spirit promise, echoes down throughout the millennia and says, you shall live. Though you feel dried up and scattered. So many have described that moment. I've had those moments in my life where somehow mystically, it wasn't the sound of a rushing wind, but I could hear that voice and I knew it was true. You shall live. The second story we hear today is another one of those stories we've been hearing all during Easter season about Jesus teaching his disciples before he leaves. And this one is astounding. We already heard about God is love, another three words. This teaching is astounding because Jesus says, I have things to teach you that you can't bear right now, but you will be able to in the future, and I will send the Holy Spirit to continue to teach you throughout your life, throughout your ministry, whatever it is. You will continue to learn. Sometimes I think when our lives come apart, we're actually the fortunate ones because then we cry out to God and we're open to God uh, sending the Holy Spirit. We're open to whatever the Holy Spirit can do to, to give us life back again. But for most of our lives, when we're pretty in control and we may feel pretty much like we've got it together, we may not be open to how the Spirit would lead us, but it's this teaching of Jesus that speaks to us in our everyday life, throughout our entire life. Early in John's Gospel, Jesus meets with a teacher of the law, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, being a teacher of the law, knows the great traditions of God's work in the world. Nicodemus knows how the, how the Jewish people have ordered their lives so that they might be holy. But, as the story says, they meet in the dark. Nicodemus is still in the dark. And what is he in the dark about? He's in the dark about is that the answers that have worked for him in his life to bring him this far in life as a teacher of the law, those answers don't go far enough. They don't lead Nicodemus to true life. In order for Nicodemus, the great teacher of the law, to find life, he has to be willing, I think, to disassemble some of the things he knows, some of the things that keep him alive, surviving, so that he can take another step, so that he has to let go of what he thinks about the Messiah when he sees Jesus, because he has to be able to 
see Jesus for who he is before he can move on and grow deeper in the Spirit of God. And I think that speaks to us. We're so good at figuring out our lives that sometimes we grasp so tightly to things that we think are essential about how we live our lives, and yet what the Spirit is doing in the Nicodemus story and what the Spirit wants to do in us sometimes is paradoxically the opposite of what the Spirit did in the Ezekiel reading. The Spirit wants to pull us apart a little bit. We hold on to these connections we've made so tight, but before the Spirit can work, the Spirit needs to pull us apart a little bit so that the Spirit can move us to the next place. And so Jesus says, I have many things to teach you right now that you cannot bear, but there will come a moment when if you're open, when if you're willing to be broken open a little bit, then the Spirit can weave and work to take you to the next place. These are great readings for the transitional time that our parish is in. You and I have been together many, many years. And we've learned to do things a certain way, and we've come to depend on each other a certain way. But it is right that at a certain time, the Spirit can begin to work in our community in a new way. It's true for any transition in your life or any moment in your life that, that the Spirit can move so that you shall live, really live. So on this Feast of Pentecost, you may not hear a rushing wind. Tongues of flame it may not be dancing on top of your head, but know that the Holy Spirit is at work. Trust that the Holy Spirit is at work. And then, as a person, as a community, take that next step and be with other people. Be with this broken world that's lying on the valley floor like dry bones. Be with those who are, be, be with those who are so certain of their way to, to help them open a little bit to the reality that the power of the Spirit can work in their lives to take them to a deeper kind of life than they ever could have imagined. So that's the last word I leave with you now from my last sermon at St. Paul's. It's my heartfelt prayer that you will know life in the season ahead. That if you're feeling a little bit like your dry bones on the floor and feeling some grief and fear about what's next, the Holy Spirit will bring those pieces together in a new way and will give you life. And if you're just feeling like, hey, we've got it all together, we're making it, watch out. If you allow yourself to be disassembled, the Holy Spirit will teach you new things that you could not bear yet, that you weren't ready to receive yet, to lead you to life. And so as I leave you on this day, my prayer is, may God lead you to life. You will live.
the prayers of the people. Holy Spirit, when you came, your church was born in wind and fire and words of power. Come to our church as we set out on a new path. Give us patience and wisdom as we begin a season of discernment. Guide our faithful Pastor Thomas as he follows your call in the next season of his life and ministry. Come Holy Spirit, breathe new life into your church. Holy Spirit, when you come, your breath blew fear aside and in its place, weak hearts were stronger. Be with all those who are in positions of trust and power in our church, in our government, and in our work. Let the love overcome fear and compassion, overcome selfishness, that all may receive the life you offer. Come Holy Spirit, breathe courage into all hearts to bear your love. Holy Spirit, you came as your word foretold with dreams and signs, vision and wonders. Open our hearts to trust in the wonder of the new creation you reveal. And when we are weary, the strength to carry your vision into the world. Come Holy Spirit, breathe new dreams into our hearts and into your world. Holy Spirit, you bring healing into lives that are broken and comfort into hearts that are hurting. Be with all who suffer this day with sickness, depression, and brokenness. Today, we especially remember those on our parish prayer list, John and Shelley Pasco. Brendan Panetta and family, Pamela Allen, Charles Vaughn, Jim Hansen, Bonnie Merrick, Christopher, Diane Miller, the Forrest family, Michelle Sloat, Susan Lawson, Billy Young, Laura Cope, John and Arlene Borgeson, Nate Price, Nan Blair, or Michelle Blair, Nan Kasulos, Tom Bryce, Renee and Bernd Kim, Wally Clevisall, Jim Prescott, the Murdoff family, especially Charlotte. I invite your own prayers at this time. Holy Spirit, you come to feed the heart of a world that hungers. We give thanks for this gathering around the Lord's table and for the spiritual food we receive from you through the sacrament and through our siblings in Christ. Come Holy Spirit, breathe your new life into each soul and all souls gathered today. O oh, Holy Spirit, give us light and life. Impart to us thoughts better than our thoughts and prayers better than our own prayers and powers better than our own powers that we may spend and be spent in the ways of love and goodness after the perfect image of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Gracious God, faithfully hear the prayers of your people and answer them as may be best for us in the power of your Holy Spirit, who heals and restores all things. Amen.
And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, may God, who blesses us on our way each day, keep your hearts and minds open to the transforming spirit that brings new life to this world. And the life of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and sustain you this day and always. We remain one in the spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.